parásitos y los hijos de los parásitos que quieran enarbolar la bandera vergonzosa del crimen y de la traición a la patria. Sepan que no se van a enfrentar con señoritos, sepan que se van a enfrentar con hombres. I'm Richard Eder. For many years, I was a foreign correspondent for the New York Times. And in 64, the uh, Times asked me to see if I could get into Cuba and uh, dispatched at the same time Jack Manning, who was one of the star photographers for the New York Times. One of my missions was to try to talk to Castro, to have an interview with him. The only time the journalists could count on seeing Castro was at diplomatic receptions. In this case, it was the Canadian National Day, and around midnight when it was time to go, Jack Manning, bless his heart, and unput downable as all photographers are, uh, said, well, Fidel, he said, uh, what about that interview? And he looked at us and said, well, come along. And that began a three-day uh, I can't say an odyssey, a fid fidelacy, because one never spoke or was briefly with Castro. He did everything at great length and in great display. So a part of those three days and three nights was dedicated to 16 or 18 hours of intensive interviewing about the politics. The other half was a kind of show and tell around Cuba what would happen is at the hotel, a blue Oldsmobile would appear, usually at about five in the morning, and in the front seat was a man reading a newspaper, and it was always Castro. One of his peculiarities was that unlike other important people, he would never ride in the back seat. He wanted to ride in the front seat so he could tell everybody what to do and where to go. We visited the things that he was interested in. What Castro was interested in was to make Cuba a great agricultural empire. So all the emphasis was on, on cattle, on dairy, on planting crops, on making the island self-sustaining, as he, he would say. Within a year, American farmers are going to come to Cuba to see how we do things. So we'd, we would go out and wade among cows and cow givers. But a lot of the trip was given to addressing groups of technicians, young people, drumming up enthusiasm for getting back to the land. There were no appointments in Cuba. You know, the clock was, was Castro's clock and the appointments were Castro's appointments. So he'd drive up, the students or the young workers would gather around and he would, he would lecture them about the economic future of Cuba. Now, you must realize that this was trips out to the country. These were the campesinos or the, or the children of campesinos. There was absolute unquestionable support. I mean, the central government had never really visited them. He's a man of immense charm, immense ability to talk directly to you. He has enormous charisma. And here he was looking at them and telling them that their lives were going to be better, only they'd have to change from accounting to agronomy. And bear in mind, this was 64, it was six to seven years after the revolution. And, you know, the long downhill of time had not yet begun. And there was still enormous hope. Of course, there were many Cubans who were very critical, and more of them in the city. But on these barnstorming trips, it was all fun. For a journalist, it was an opportunity to be at an important moment and to interview, to talk, to describe, to portray someone who at that time was one of the major figures preoccupying the United States, of whom a certain amount was known, but a certain amount was not.